Welcome to Interest Agent Training. We're going to talk about how can you avoid chargebacks. Okay, this is a topic that isn't fun to talk about. It is, uh, it's negative, right? That word is negative, but how to avoid them is positive, right? So that's why today we're going to talk about how to help you avoid them altogether. Typically, uh, typically persistency about, you know, 14 month persistency is typically around 80%, right? Can be higher, can be lower. If it's phone sales, it can be higher, can be lower, depending on the agent. And if they're a rookie, if they're new, if they're experienced, if they're great with people, everything in between. But I want, agents should know that chargebacks are going to happen 100%. It's not, it's, it's inevitable, right? It isn't, it isn't unavoidable, but there are some things that you can do to help your overall persistency and avoid some chargebacks. And the first thing, because I got several tips I want to run through today. The first thing is you need to always be interested in uh, doing what's in the best interest of the client, right? I think a lot of times clients can feel where you're at, right? Where's your head at? Where's your heart at? Are you doing the right thing for them? Are you just trying to grab a quick buck and run? Because they can feel that too, right? So at the end of the day, I've always been good at not only physically selling like this, but training like this, that you should always be doing what's in the best interest of the client. Do whatever it takes to make them feel that you are doing what is best for them, right? And as long as you go into it like that, then the rest, it'll help the rest of these steps. But if you're thinking about how you can just earn a quick buck and you're thinking about you, 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 and you're selfish and you don't think about them, someone's going to be able to feel it. Okay. So that's the first thing. I want to jump into the appointment process because there's a couple key pieces that can help avoid some chargebacks. Okay. There's really three key pieces inside of an appointment. The first one is you want to warm up. You want to make sure that you are building rapport and warming someone up. When I just jump into a cell, uh, it, it almost feels like I'm just there to make a cell, right? Or to grab a cell. And, and they know that's the case. You're there, you're a salesperson, you're there to make the cell. But that doesn't mean that you can't also warm them up immediately early in the appointment process and also throughout the call, right? Or throughout the appointment. Okay. So, so making sure you're warming them up. Some, some, some prospects, you know, a few minutes of warm up is plenty and they're like, Hey, let's get to the point. Right. Then that's fine. Some prospects are, you know, they'll, they'll warm up, they'll warm up, warm up with you for, you know, freaking 40 minutes. And I'm like, all right, I got to transition. Okay. That's when I'll jump into the question. Hey, what, you know, Hey, to thank you again for your time today. What got you thinking about all this? Right. So you can transition to the fact finding portion. Warm up's really important. The second thing inside of an appointment to help with avoiding chargebacks is to not oversell. Okay. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you want to sell small policies. That also doesn't mean that you want to sell with your own wallet because that's not the case either. What you want to do is like, you don't want to sell everyone a $200 a month policy just because that's the only thing that you pitch. You want to show them. I'm not saying you show them what, what they can afford because that is incorrect as well. It doesn't matter, right? If you're asking what can you afford monthly to pay for something like this, you're making them think small and you're going to end up definitely underselling big time. And that's not the point either, right? Because you want to maximize what you're able to sell without actually overselling. And the way I avoid overselling is I figure out what they need, right? If you're doing what's in the best interest and you're giving them what they what they need, then you're not underselling and you're not overselling. But if you give them a lot more covers than they need or a lot less covers than they need, then you are overselling or underselling. But if you oversell and you're just trying to grab the most amount of insurance possible and you're not doing what they need, yeah, you'll make some big sales, but you'll lose some clients along the way because they'll be like, well, dude, why, why do you have, you know, $1.6 million in life insurance and you're, you know, and you don't have, and, and, and you have zero debt, you know, you're not married, um, you have, you know, half a million dollars in the bank and you simply want to like cover burial and final expenses, right? You see where I'm going with the logic? Okay. Now there's a lot of reasons why you need 1.6 million or more. Okay. But in this scenario, what we're talking about, this is why we're explaining this. Okay. So selling what they need, focused on them, focused on them, right? They can feel that. The third part in the appointment to help avoid chargebacks is the cool down. That's my forced fourth step of my four step appointment process. Most people forget about the cool down when they are 
making a sell or they're in an appointment. A lot of agents will fill out the application. Okay, what's your social security number, your beneficiary, et cetera. And then they'll fill out the application. They'll do the phone interview. They'll get them approved. And then they'll run. Hey, we'll get you a policy. Thanks for your time. Have a great day, right? Instead, I like to take a good five or 10 minutes and cool down off of business after the appointment. And there's several reasons why I do that. Big reason is because their mind is off of sales, right? When I leave, they're not thinking about the sale or the business or the purchase. They're thinking about, you know, what an amazing do that or do, or, or, or do that is, right? But we're also, they're realizing, hey, he's not just here to grab a sale and run. He's here because he really cares and he's gotten to know me and he's a good person and I got along with him really well or her, right, et cetera, okay? Because most people forget about the cool down because you're able to use those little things in some of the later stuff I'm going to talk about to, to, to really help avoid some chargebacks along the way, okay? Um, cool, cool down is always a good thing. Um, the next thing that I would encourage, and these are all just random like off the dome things that I've, that I've done over, over, over the last, you know, several years is uh, I like to leave some type, I like to leave a business card magnet. For instance, there's agents in our local office here. And one of them came to me last week and said, hey, uh, Miss, Miss, I, was, I was with a Miss Mabel and I was trying to help her with her insurance and then I saw your business card magnet on the fridge. So, you know, what's the deal there? I don't want to steal your business. What's the deal there? What do you have? How long has it been? What did you do, et cetera? And the, for that reason, it's good, but also because if they're never going to forget my name, they're never going to forget my number. If someone else is trying to come in and lie and replace my business, which is a potential chargeback by knowing that they can call me, it can help avoid that, right? So by having something that is always on their fridge that they can't lose, I loved doing business card magnets, especially if you're doing face-to-face -face sales. I'm a big part of it. You can still do it over face phone sales too, right? You easily could, but with face-to-face, -face especially business card magnet is huge because it's going to keep your, your, your name top of mind. Okay. The next thing after a business card magnet, okay, would be a thank you card. I think that you should send out a thank you card to every single prospect that you help after you're able to help them. Uh, something I always did something that, and I didn't have a lot of problems with chargebacks. I really didn't. It's because I did all these things I'm talking about. Okay. Business card magnets, a thank you card and not not thank you for your business, you know, signed Cody. That's boring. It's not unique. It's stupid. Okay. Uh, Betty, because I always use Betty. Betty, I absolutely loved visiting with you. You know, I can tell you have a big heart. Thanks for sharing the story about your, you know, daughter, Susie. Uh, I look forward to continue to get to know you for many years to come. You know, thank you for your trust, right? In no way did I ever mention business at all because they know who you are, right? And then I'll throw another business or business card or business card magnet or whatever in there. But the point isn't to, th the point is to thank them for their business in a less businessy way, if that makes sense. Okay, so start to think about that. All right. Thank you card is, 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 is another good one. Um, next thing is that I used to do a lot of is a uh, monthly newsletter. So I would send out a monthly newsletter to all my clients every single month, a physical newsletter by mail. And this newsletter would have a recipe. It would have a, you know, maybe a trivia, maybe an update, always a picture of me or a picture of me and my wife, you know, a picture of me and my wife, my dog, something, right? So there's emotional human connection. Um, it not only helps avoid chargebacks, that helps you get referrals because once someone has that emotional connection with you, they don't want to let you down. So in that instance, they're less likely to get rid of you and push you to the curb and replace you because they have an emotional connection with you, right? That's why I love pictures on cards, pictures on envelopes, pictures on letters, pictures on everything because it's a facial recognition, emotional connection to you. So not only are you building that, it'll help avoid chargebacks. It'll help that you stay top of mind so that you get referrals all the time, which is why I love the monthly newsletter. Uh, and there's been several 
good pieces in this, Dylan and, and Keith, that you guys can reuse for future videos. The other thing outside of even uh, referrals is that it's actually going to earn you business too. I had someone that I wasn't able to help uh, sell years ago and I added them to my newsletter. And then I think three or four years later, they reached out and said, hey, you, you've been sending us something and we've you've stayed in front of us for the last you know, three or four years, we feel like, you know, if we're going to buy insurance, we should probably just buy it from you because you've done the best job and we've never even bought from you. Right. So you see the, you see the point. Okay. Behind that. So a newsletter, great way to stay top of mind and to build a emotional connection and a relationship because you're always in front of them. You are, you're always reminding them of you. And, and some, some, some agents are going to hear this, all of this and think, well, I don't want them to remember me because then they're more likely to, it, it's almost like, I, I'm going to run out of the home after I make the sale because I don't want you to change your mind. Or as soon as I set the appointment, I'm hanging up because I don't want you to cancel, right? If they're going to cancel the appointment, you know, if you're worried about them canceling the last 30 seconds of the call, then they're probably going to cancel anyway. If you're worried about them, you know, changing their mind while you're still in the home after you made the sale, then they're going to cancel later. I'd rather them cancel while I'm talking to them, right? Or, or sh sh you know, tell me why they can't do something or show, you know, a lack of confidence in what we're doing. I'm not worried about losing the appointment, losing the sale, or losing them as a client later. I'm just going to do what I know is right and what's best to do, and the rest will take care of itself. And that's what always happens with this kind of stuff. It really does. Um, next thing is you need to, you need to constantly, uh, especially if they're thinking about canceling a policy, you need to remind them why they did this why they chose to do this with you to solve this problem. And if we, you know, do something, then it may not help solve that problem, right? So when you're selling life insurance, there's several places that when someone's trying to cancel, they'll talk about the two-year contestability period and how you don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to lose the time that you've invested. And they'll also mention, you know, cash value and how you've invested money, but you haven't got to that point yet and how you don't want to cancel because you're going to lose all the money you put in, you know, and, and you know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's sales tricks for keeping people like call centers are great at that stuff. Um, so remind them of their why. And then, I, you know what, if they're going to like not keep me and, and it's in a really important, you know, client or you, you don't like chargebacks, you don't want to avoid it, then go see them, you know, make time to go see them. Uh, I'm not saying you want to fill your week with, you know, that type of activity every week, but if it saves business, then it keeps money in your pocket, you know? So, so, and, and it's harder to say no in person than it is over the phone. Um, you can't let them cancel through text. You can't let them cancel through email. You need to talk to them. Okay. Um, just show up at their door, right? Something may be going. And also another big thing is don't assume anything. Most, most agents say, well, they're thinking about canceling you know, I guess they don't like me anymore. Well, maybe, you know, maybe they're, they changed banks and they didn't let you know. Maybe, uh, some, another agent lied to them. Maybe the other agent done something stupid. And, and if they mess this up and you let them leave, you're doing them a dis, another dis, you know, uh, uh, you're doing them a disservice like the other agent, right? Don't ever, don't ever assume that, they don't want to do business with you or they don't want to keep you or that, you know, they're just broke or they don't have the money or, you know, they're, they're lazy or they don't want it. Like you are the salesperson. You're supposed to be proactive about keeping them. Okay. So that's a ton of ideas on how to help avoid chargebacks. They're inevitable. They're going to happen, but there are things that you can do along the way to try to keep them. Hey, you love this and you're like, dude, what are the mistakes that I don't want to make and how do I avoid them, right? I'm going to go over this top six mistakes agents make and how you can avoid making them right here. Click on that video. See you over there. Hey, six mistakes. Six mistakes that a lot of agents make. I wonder if you're making them and how to avoid them. So I'm going to start out by letting you